So now we're gonna to go to the map. Now you're welcome to just follow along and watch me as I orient you to this map or in the chat, Anna has posted a, the direct link to this dashboard. This is a dashboard you're welcome to bookmark. This is embeddable on your organization's website if you're a Photofauna partner and want to use it. Our goal is to continue to develop and add to this dashboard so it's a place where everyone in the community can come and see what we're learning about the species of the region. This is hosted by Esri and it has some really cool map features that link figures to the field of view within the map. So within the map here, what you're seeing are the distribution of the cameras in the region. And I'm gonna scroll out a little bit so you can see, we've got folks that are participating outside of the Sky Island region, which we love. Many of the species on our checklist are not only found in the Sky Island region, they have much larger ranges. We would love to see this project grow much further outside the boundaries of what we traditionally call the Sky Island region. To zoom in and out, what I do is just to scroll with my, with my mouse. So if you scroll down, you're going to zoom in. If you scroll up, you will zoom out. At any point, if you need to recenter back to the, the center field of view, you can hit the home button icon in the top right. To understand what the heck all these circles mean, you can click on this little icon here in the center and it'll pop up the legend. So the difference between the yellow and the blue markers indicate whether there is water, drinkable water present um, next to that, that camera site or at that camera site. And then the size of the circle for that camera site scales with the richness. So fewer species have much smaller, smaller circles. And then the higher re a species richness where more species have been detected on that camera over time is indicated by a larger circle. I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna start here in Tucson and zoom in a little bit. And what you can do is if you just click on any camera site, it's gonna pop up some information about what we know um, about that, uh, that camera site and the data that's come in. So remember, this is not a precise location. This is a, a location within about a kilometer of, of where the actual camera data came from. You can see how many species were actually um, seen here. Um, if you scroll down, you can see which months, checklist months uh, are reporting in. We've been in recent months asking people to let us know how often people are detected on cameras. Some cameras are near, near public spaces where there may be high levels of recreation. That could be a factor that influence, influences which species are found in that place. So we're beginning to collect that as a covariate data. The presence of domestic dogs and cats, Certainly, if we're interested in looking at whether round-tailed squirrels are present in a place, knowing whether there are domestic cats out there hunting um, is a relevant factor. We're looking at whether livestock is present and vehicles. Um, so that's just a, something that you can note when you're looking at these different camera locations. Um, and then this is the richness over time. And you can see the kind of a classic increase in uh, richness for this particular camera the longer it was running, which makes sense. Okay, so one thing that's super cool is that this map is linked to the neighborhood graph with the green bars on the right hand side, and it's also linked to the species frequency graph down with the purple bars below the map. So as you zoom in, these graphs are going to change. And you can see which neighborhoods are reporting in and the relative number of species seen in each of those neighborhoods. So we could, I'm gonna, sorry, scroll out for a moment. And if I click on a neighborhood like Marana, Marana, you can see the cluster of cameras that we have up there, which is really neat. And you can zoom in and look at them more closely. And as you zoom into a particular neighborhood, then you can see the species that have been that have been detected on these cameras, javelina, coyote, bobcat, cooper's hawk, cottontail, um, and the relative um, number of them, which is, which is great. So if you have 
something coming up in your community, um, let's say there's going to be a habitat restoration project and you want to weigh in about species you care about, I hope this can become a resource where people can come and see the species that have been detected there and go into planning projects, um, working with their municipalities to be designing, whether it's a development project or a restoration project, to be enhancing as many species habitat as possible. On the left of the species graph, there's just a richness counter, which indicates for the field of view of the map that you're looking at, how many species total have been detected so far. Over time with this project, with more months reporting in, more cameras coming online, these species richness numbers are surely to just keep climbing. Okay, I'm gonna scroll out a little bit. Hope I'm not making anyone seasick. <laughs> um, so you can always hit the home button if you want uh, to snap back out to a big field of view. And just be aware that the, that the neighborhoods that you collect, you can, you can touch multiple neighborhoods and pull up all those cameras. And until you unclick them, only those will show. And then once you've unclicked them, the whole complement will um, show. If you want to look just at these neighborhoods or locales, you can expand this figure by clicking on the circle with the arrows pointing out, and that will bring up a very large um, version of it. You can also scale it if you want to zoom in to the lower part of the graph. You can zoom in that way. Or likewise, if you want to look at the top part of the graph, you can, you can expand that as well. And all of these bars are clickable. If you hover over them, you'll find out how many species so far have been detected in, in these different locales. The same thing is true just exploring by species. You can open the figure with all of the species listed in this bar graph. You can click on it and get the exact number of how many detections we've had, for example. But what's fun to do is to click on a species and then see the locations where it's actually been detected. Um, I'm clicking on coyote. You can see that it has a truly binational distribution. We're seeing it across most of the clusters of cameras um, that we're seeing in the region. Now you can unclick coyote and go to javelina, really similar distribution. And this, I think, will be one of the fun things uh, to play around with if you zoom into a part of the region that you're particularly interested in and see if these species are showing up in your neck of the woods. Um, finally, I'll just share that we've got the two graphs on the left that look more at the occurrence relative to whether a camera site is wet or dry. The one in the upper right, this is species richness. Um, versus the months of the project. I've already shared you, I shared a version of this graph with a trend line of how many checklists have come in over the months during the PowerPoint presentation. Um, but this is just another way to look at the relative differences over time about whether a camera site was wet or if it was dry. Just a note about how to read the month. It's the year followed by the digits of the month. So. You can see we have some long running cameras that went all the way back to 2013. Um, and the project started, project started right here um, in October of 2020. We actually have a really even distribution um, between cameras that are near water and not near water, which is great. That's really helpful for us to have that distinction because we can see whether species now aggregate more closely with sites that have water or if they're avoiding water, um, maybe because of predation risk and more commonly found in places where water isn't nearby. Um, in recent months, we definitely had more cameras reporting in with water present. I suspect that's because we have had a pretty wet summer. Yay, monsoon. <laughs> um, all right, so zooming back out of that, I'll show you the last panel. And this is a similar type of graph, but um, looking at the number of camera sites, but instead of time on the x-axis, it's actually the species that have been positively detected on the camera network. So you can look at um, which of these species are found more often at water or not near water. In Bobcat, we have a lot more detections near water, but it's still found at a pretty high level uh, camera sites that don't have water nearby. Um, this here is coyote. So similar pattern to Bobcat. 
there's so much um, human nature. We love putting cameras on water sources because we feel like all the animals are gonna come there. And there is evidence for that. But we really also love these data that come from non-water source places because it's a random sample in some ways of that habitat and who's transiting through. So feel free to, to go through these graphs and, and, and check out your favorite species. And, and if you're trying to put a new camera out to detect a certain species, maybe this can help you decide how close to water you want to make it.